I remember when I built my first PC and I asked somebody for advice about case fans. And I remember what they said was, fans are fans, unless you're looking for performance, then Noctua. And I was like, that's a weird thing to say. But I Googled it and uh, I was like, oh. Things have gotten a little better since then with Noctua releasing their black fans or industrial version, but they still don't do anything with RGB, which is basically like saying, I hate money in today's PC market. Don't be a pillock. Noctua isn't for those looking to peacock with flashy RGB. It's for the elite enthusiasts looking to maximize performance. Do you like that? Does that sound British and <laughs> pop? So given I have a pretty strong opinion on the looks of Noctua fans, it wouldn't really be fair if I was like, they're ugly, so therefore they lose. So I'm going to be ranking these fans on a set number of parameters, price, performance, acoustics, aesthetics, and overall build quality. And I'm just going to rate them all against each other and then whatever one has the best score wins. Now obviously some of these parameters are going to be opinion based, so insert your opinion where necessary and let's get started. So first, it's going to be price. So the most expensive fan that I have in this lineup is this one, the HD120 RGB from Corsair sitting at around $29.99. Second place goes to the Noctua NF F12, currently sitting around $19.95. And third place would go to the Hyper 212 Evo fan, which is based on appearance, looks to be the Cooler Master Blade Master 120, sitting around $12.42. The last two fans come from NZXT, and these are the standard FN version two, and you can get them like secondhand on eBay for around five bucks or so. Uh, this one came from uh, the S340 Elite case here. And then this one came from an old case that I built back in 2011. Uh, they're still the same type of fan. This is this one's really old, so I thought it'd be interesting to see how it performs. And uh, I mean, it still has a Molex connector, so that's cool. Aesthetics. Now this is a bigger deal than you might initially think, but when you build your own computer, there's a lot of pride that goes into it and having something that looks good is something people pay attention to, or at least I do. So let's start with the winner from last round, the NGXT FN version two. So let's just talk about these two fans. They're basically the same fan. Obviously this one's white, this one's black. So if I had to choose between the two, I'd take the black one just because it's easier to deal with. You can just hide a plain fan in a building better than you can a white one. Next, let's talk about the Corsair fans. So, I mean, it's still black, so that's easy to deal with in a build. Um, I do like the blade design on this one better. So I, do, I would take this one over the NZXT black fan. Um, that's about it for that one. The Noctua fan, it's a Noctua fan, I mean, bleh. and then this one, this is the HD120, and this one's obviously RGB, and if you, if you, if you, pro you probably guessed, I would pick this one as number one. So this would be number one, uh, I would probably pick this guy number two, then the black, the black uh, NZXT fan, just because it's plain and black and easier to deal with, and then actually I would probably take this white one after that because White is still easier to deal with than whatever color that is. So in this case, yes, the Noctua fan would be last. Would you, did you expect anything less? I will say, it is worth noting though, that if I would have got this one in the industrial version, that's the black version, it would probably number two because the overall quality or the finish on this fan is a lot better than any of these other ones, I will say that. It doesn't have RGB though, so that is obviously gonna lose in my department. So since we're on the topic of build quality, Let's talk about the build quality of these fans. So these two um, obviously feel pretty cheap. These are fans you would get free in a case. There's not much to them. That's why they cost so little is because there's just not much fan here. I mean, they do, the, they do their job, they're a fan, but when it comes to build quality, they're made just about as good as they had to be. Um, this guy, uh, you can tell that it's made better than these ones, but the emphasis, the money was spent on the RGB. Not really the fan itself, so it's thinner plastic. Um, but you know, it's still it's still better off than those guys. The Cooler Master fan, although it does feel better than these, uh, you know, the NZXT fans, you can still tell that this is a budget fan. Obviously, it comes on this cooler, so it's not going to be that expensive. Even if you buy this, um, the fan by itself, it's still cheap, and you can tell by holding it. And this is kind of where the Noctua fan kind of sticks out. So the fan is. You know, okay, it's got, compared to the other ones, it does have weight to it. You can just look at it and see that there's more thought and engineering put into designing this fan. Um, at least on the physical fan itself, the color, it was kind of an afterthought it looks like, or they thought they were being cool. I don't know what the, I, I don't know why this color was ever chosen, but I don't know, just the, the vibration pads, the, the, the physical weight, you know, the fan just feels 
built better. So obviously the Noctua fan is gonna be number one in build quality, followed by this one, followed by the Cool Master, and then the black NZXT and then the white NZXT. So finally, let's discuss performance and acoustics. So for my test, I needed a way to attach all these fans to my Hyper 212 Evo. And now the Blademaster 120, it does come with a bracket that allows it to mount to the cooler. And I could have swapped the bracket between all the fans, but I didn't want to give, you know, the Cooler Master fan an unfair advantage because obviously that fan was designed with that bracket in mind. So the fan maybe works better with that bracket than the other ones would, and I didn't want to give it an unfair advantage. Also, it sounded just a bit too boring to just swap things around. So what I did do is I used it as an excuse to get in SolidWorks and design this. This is a simple air duct that will allow me to mount all these fans to my Noctua cooler at the same distance in the same orientation from the cooler. Now, because this duct is square, there is going to be, you know, a bit of a, you know, you got a square hole and a round fan. So there's going to be a bit of turbulence caused by the fans blowing through the square duct. And that's going to give a little bit of turbulence. So something for the fans to work against. So it might, you know, highlight which fans move air better. This duct was constructed of 3 16th inch foam board that you could find pretty much anywhere. Um, I really wish I had a laser cutter when I made this because it was really a pain cutting everything out by hand. And if I had a laser cutter, I could have just programmed it, hit the button and just started gluing. So if you got a, I mean, if you got a laser cutter and you don't need it, hit me up. This ducting will be attached to the Hyper 212 Evo cooler with the brackets that come with the fan itself. This is sitting on top of my i5-2500K that's overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz on my, you know, DIY test bench here. The GPU I'm using is irrelevant. Eh, this is a 580. The ambient temperature in the room though is 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius. And for the CPU test itself, so what we're going to do is we're going to run the CPU under full synthetic load in IDA64 for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, I'm going to record the CPU package max temp and average temp. We're going to use that for scoring. Then the CPU is going to be allowed to cool and sit at idle so it can return to idle temperatures. And we're going to swap the fan out. And we're going to repeat this test over and over until we do every single fan. As for my acoustical testing, we're going to be using the ultra precise sound meter on my, on my phone here because that's the best I can do in this situation. Now we're going to try to make this as you know, precise as we can. We're going to make sure to record all the fans on the same plane as the fan blades and also the same distance. So, you know, we're just gonna, we're gonna try to do our best with this device, but it's gonna give us an idea what fans louder than the others. And uh, let's get going. So before we get going, I will say that I've already run all these tests for the 30 minutes Ida runs. I didn't wanna sit here and have to do it on camera. I haven't taken all the DB re readings. So we're gonna do that kind of as we fill in the rest of this sheet here. Um, I will say that originally I wanted to set all the fans to 1200 RPM and see how they all performed, but uh, even when I set them in the BIOS, they would slowly ramp up over time. So what I ended up doing was letting them run at their max, you know, RPM. So the BIOS is set to run all the CPU fans at full on. So everything's going to run as fast as it could. Um, we're going to start with the old NZXT FN version 2. And this one is quite old. You can see that the uh, the fan plane is a little wobbly. But we're going to we're going to take a DB reading. We're going to do it the same for all of them. We're going to take a, a measure it you know, on plane with the fan and at hopefully the same distance. We're just gonna let it run for a few seconds. Look at the average uh, dB reading and then the max dB reading. And we're gonna compare it to the other ones. So, and also this one doesn't, I mean, I can still feel some turbulence above the fan. So it is kind of blowing. Some of the air is coming back up since it's trying to get it forced through, but it is passing it through. Let's see what it reads for dB. So I ran that for 15 seconds. The average dB was 45.2 with a max of 52.3. And this fan after the IDA test, the, the max temperature was 69 degrees Celsius with an average load temperature of 61.8. Next we'll run this nice fancy knock to a fan. So right off the bat you can definitely tell it's a lot quieter and there's a lot less air. It's actually surprising how much air, how much less turbulence there is above this fan. Oh, interesting. Let's see what the, uh, what the old DB reader says. So 15 seconds we are sitting at an average DB of 52.1 with a max of 55.7 does sound quite, you know, a little bit louder. It does spin faster. This, this fan's RPMs was measured at 1530. So 1,530 RPMs. And uh, for temperatures, this one got a max temperature of 67 degrees Celsius with an average load temperature of 59.6. So it did perform better than the, the ancient NZXT FN version two. So, I mean, other than looking like crap, it performed pretty good. So now let's look at the fancy RGB one. So the Corsair fan is quite a bit noisier, just, just listening to it. And there's a little bit more, uh, there's a lot actually, a lot more turbulence above the fan itself. 
So let's see what, it'll, what the old measurement on this one is. So the Corsair fan finished with an average decibel reading of 57.5 and a max of 69.9. And it does sound louder. I mean, I will, I will say that for temperatures, the Corsair fan finished with a max temperature of 65 degrees Celsius with an average load temperature of 58.2. And um, I will say it did pretty good, but that is also why it also due to it's like one of the fastest spinning fans I have. The RPMs on this one ranged from, I think they measured at 1900 RPMs was the range for this one itself. So, second fastest fan, pretty good temperatures, but obviously quite loud at its 1900 RPMs here. Now let's give the other NZXT fan a squirrel. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? There it is. Okay, this fan is quieter, does have some turbulence above it. Um, this fan's RPMs was measured at 1,270, and let's see what it's measured on the DB phone. So the average DB reading of the black NZXT fan is 46.5 with a max of 53.1. So for the black NZXT fan, the max temperature we got was 68 degrees Celsius with an average load temperature of 61.2. So not too bad. And last but not least, the Cooler Master stock fan from the Evo itself. So we'll see what this bad boy does. So the Cooler Master fan does sound to be the loudest, but it also is the one that spins the fastest at 2,070 RPMs. Uh, the turbulence above the fan doesn't feel too bad, but it is. it does sound loud compared to the other ones. Let's see how much louder. So the Cooler Master fan has an average DB reading of 58.4 with a max of 62.9. So, and just based on my calibrated ears, it does sound like the loudest. And for temperatures, this Cooler Master fan finished with an, a max temperature of 64 degrees Celsius and an average load temperature of 57.2. So it did, uh, did perform very well, but it also is spinning quite fast and it is the loudest one. So let me turn let me turn this thing off and we'll look at all the scores from all the fans and see how they performed. Be quiet. So I went through and I tallied up all my scores for all the numbers that I given each fan for each respectful test. And when it's all said and done, what I got for the winner was the Corsair HD 120 and actually the Cooler Master Master Blade 120 were actually tied with 16 points each. So uh, that was that's pretty random. Second place went to the Black NZXT FN version 2 with 15 points. Third place went to the Noctua fan with 14 points. And in last place was the old fan from 2011 with 13 points. So when it's all said and done, is there anything special about the Noctua fan? In my opinion, no. A fan is a fan. Um, if you're looking for something RGB, then obviously Noctua is not your thing. And they, you know, they boast all these special molded details, helping improve acoustics or increase airflow. But for my testing, it's seems more gimmicky than really anything else. I mean, if you like the if you like the color scheme of the Noctua fan, then this is probably for you. If you like RGB, then Noctua is not going to work. And if you're just looking for a fan that's going to cool your system and be cheap, then get something like this NZXT FN version 2, the black one. It matches anything and it does just as good as any other fan, uh, especially when it comes to noise. That one was quite quiet and it's really cheap. But you know, in the end, a fan's a fan. So your preference is all that really matters. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Get subscribed. Uh, stick around because I have some more plans for this Cooler Master 212. You know, this little air cooler that I, that I think is going to be pretty cool that you might want to see. So make sure to get subscribed. We'll see you in the next video. So bye.